Alrighty, we are back aronies. And we are ready for game number two is Jerkin his Durkin. Yeah, okay. Don't need to know that. <laughs> Anyways, MVP Everybody. poll is in the chat. Gil, let us know who your MVP for game number one is. Before we start game number two, I think that's when we will call the the vote. Is at the beginning of game number two when we are in client pick band. So you have until then to get your votes in. Anyways, what were your thoughts? Game number one. Oh, man. That, like I said, it was close through the entirety of it. I did not expect it to be that close. But, I mean, it makes sense saying at the beginning of the game that they had two very similar comps in power. They both played it kind of well until the point that they are here kind of just fell off with their plays and gave Long and Rich Long a second to come back. And then extending that fight over the bear after they got stunned and after they knew that Long and Rich Long were there, ultimately lost in the game. So I think it's a miss call that really... Miss calls in the late game that really lost it for they are here. All right, so... We're going to see our picks in bands coming very fast. Malzahar banned away, followed by Anivia. Graves taken away. And then Victor, not wanting to see the Victor for Hiramar anymore. I mean, it wasn't that great. It didn't even break 40K. <laughs> it did not break 40K. 
did have most damage in the game though as Hiramar showing that he can pull out some other stuff other than just Anivia. And that looks to be the priority bands here for they are here. Um, question is what they're going to leave off of their bands in exchange for the victor. Yeah, that'll, that will be an interesting question. As we see Kane band away here from theatrics, no more coming through walls and killing people early. And it's going to be the Shen. No Shen for General Dill. To be honest, he probably first picks it if it's up. So, What was the uh, band they left off? I can't remember. Um, it was that one champion. Uh, I think it was a Draven. Yeah, that's right. It was a Draven. Which I don't know why you ban Draven right now. It's a little, mm -hmm. leaves a lot to be desired. As we see Lelouchin first picked here by General Dill uh, for Digital Love 69. Morgana immediately picked up here for New Kappa Turk. Definitely a strong support, even throughout the all everything that's happened with ports and. ADCs, Morgana is still a very strong support and a very good flex pick into the mid lane if simply phenomenal plays it. Yeah, it's it's also something that can be taken away from Zorpox, who is shown to be very <laughs> adept at Morgana. Um, was banned away last game as well, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but I think the pick potential out of Morgana is huge, and that's why Definitely. they are here has prioritized it. Because as they showed in the last game, they do find good picks here and there. It's just sometimes <laughs> they lack enough lockdown to secure the pick uh, cleanly. Definitely. And I think the Morgana really helps with that. We're going to see Kaisa picked up here for Jirachi. Um, and again, are we going to see the return of frontline Kaisa? I, I mean, Digital Love did a little bit of frontlining Kaisa, so. You know, it's again the same, the same bot lane matchup, pretty much as yeah, frontliner Kaisa. As well, there's the Zyra you mentioned earlier. Yeah, the Zyra here for Zorpox, feeling very comfortable with it, um, and some side conversations I've had with him. Uh, Zareth also picked by Hiramar. And if I if I'm honest, I'm a little bit scared of that Zareth because that Zareth has a lot of range. Um, and something it's got a lot more range than that victor and the victor did a fair amount of damage um and it's a lot of skill shots so the Zareth a lot again a lot of skill shots but even further range so you got to back up even farther from him the, from here Mar than he did in the last game so that could be a problem um yeah. and we're gonna see the warwick here picked by theatrix in the jungle um we get two people getting things that were banned against them in the last game yeah so again lucia <laughs> not lucio <laughs> lucian kaisa again in the bot lane pretty much seems to be the adcs of the month um either lucian or kaisa or maybe a kogma and not much else other than that so courtesy of those meta changes as we're gonna see a Lowie band away here must be thinking General Dill is actually masquerading as uh, Bad Instincts. And Galio taken away from Simply Phenomenal. Uh, that's funny. Anyways, Irelia taken away here from General Dill. No more Irelia. And then Tarek, banned away from New Kappa Turk. I don't know why you would ban away the Tarek. I was kind of hoping that we'd see some uh, Yi Tarek cheese. Oh, uh, I've been waiting for that ever since someone mentioned it. You know, I have a feeling Popo might try it at some point in time. I know I've played with uh, Menbung, and we've tried it a few times. <laughs> It works more than <laughs> I, it should. I, I believe. I believe. Yeah. Anyways, we're waiting the next pick for they are here. Super Hoagie in the chat. What up, friend? Jingo Unchained is we already did. Wait, did you guys really play that? <laughs> the Yee Tarek cheese in the mid lane. I think I need to go watch that VOD. Anyways, get your votes in the chat for the MVP. Meh. 
I'm just going to throw a vote out there. Yeah, people, get your votes in. We only have three votes so far for MVP, Whoa. so... Ah, we see the Maokai and the Jacks being picked up once again in this game. So it looks like it's going to be two press the attack junglers against each other. Uh, barring either of them going electrocute for lols. Uh, and there's the Trundle you were talking about earlier. Yep, Trundle in the top lane. Jacks pick coming out here. Maokai. Again, Garfield is just sticking with that super tank that he is so fond of. Um, but I really do think the Trundle is a better matchup than the Irelia. Uh, Trundle able to shred through that armor um, that he's going to be trying to stack. So, And then, again, the Jax for Neil the Steel showed some all right play on it. Um, you know, a couple questionable decisions where he ended up jumping in and dying. Um, but still, overall, I think he did what he needed to do for the team. As we wait the final pick, it looks like it's going to be the mid laner um, for Simply Phenomenal. So, um, if I'm Simply, it's actually a Braum. Yeah, it looks like we got a Morgana mid. That means that Morgana is a mid lane. They flexed it into the mid. It's a little bit interesting. I'm not really sure if I've seen a whole lot of Simply Phenomenal playing Morgana in the mid lane. Um, so, yeah, very interesting. Get your votes in the chat as we are going to start here, and then the chat is, and the votes are going to end. So, it's a bit sad that. So we it's may a, not see simply on a lot of Morgana. It's not like it's that hard of a champion to know. As long as he lands his bindings and can get in with his ult, that's really what the Morgana needs to do. Yeah, no, it, it's definitely a, uh, the Morgana mid lane um, with a Braum picked up here. Um, but it's, again, it's just not something I've seen a whole lot of Simply Phenomenal playing. Um, anyways, we are set to start game. Yeah? Zorpox is in the spectators. Honestly, I was hoping for a bit more spice from Dylan this series. We see him on El Aurelia and Trundle, but where, where is the cheese? Oh, this Mike. is not typical Dylan strategy right here. Are you in champ select? I am. Did you tab out again or close out again? I might have crashed. Oh. Because I see everybody as in like... Yeah, no, my client is all fucked up right now. So we're going to actually have to crash client. Hopefully it doesn't crash stream as I am not looking at that. Uh, I'm going to turn it on. No, it's just showing the pick ban right now. But I don't know if I can log back into League Client. Oh, I got quiet again. No, I have been manipulating sounds. That's why. Come on, League Client. Fix yourself. Hmm. Stream's still doing good. I need to get him back. I need to get myself a better mic. <laughs> yeah, I splurged for a, uh, a Blue Yeti mic, and I have to say I am loving it. So. See, mine was working pretty well, but then... When I moved up here to Michigan, I wasn't expecting it to be 90 to 100 degrees every day. <laughs> and uh, our house didn't have AC. So I've got this tank of an AC unit running three feet away from me. Yeah, that, which makes that'll do that. Automatic, yeah, which makes automatic voice detection kind of iffy. I've actually broken my automatic voice detection on Discord in my computer because uh, I had to manually set where the voice detection is. Because it just doesn't work anymore. I don't know why. Like, well, actually, I think I know why. It's because I downloaded an audio thing to try and play sounds like this that you can't hear, but the stream can oh, hear it. Oh, soundboard. Yeah, I have a, I have like a, a, a mixer I was using, 
and it's kind of broken my computer and it definitely broke discord because uh, it broke the automatic yeah. detection um so unfortunate well, if you use something like voice meter to make a virtual nope. aco output and put it through there yeah maybe it would work you want to know what i was using what voice meter oh boy i broke it with voice meter how that's I, what i used to broadcast virtual dj and still keep discord up and breaks you know i have no idea what happened there um yeah uh, it, it, it straight up has broken my computer audio wise oh, so i had to like strip everything out and that's why stream was a little bit delayed and not as clean as i want it to be because did you have aco for all installed uh, as a standalone as well what's a uh, i don't know we'll have to, we'll have to talk after this um we can yeah i think i do but i don't know I used to DJ, and I am still a electronic composer, so I can help you. Yeah, that'd be very much appreciated uh, if we could ever figure out what's wrong with my soundboard. I've been thinking All I actually right. need to buy a mixer, as it looks like game has not started yet, as we're still looking at this. The question is, will they trade? Find out next time on Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> well, we'll have to wait just a few seconds before we can see that. Aw, oh, sad day. Did they trade? Sad. They traded. They better switch back. Some loose. Dylan, if you don't oh, switch back, oh, yes. you're a nerd. <laughs> what is he playing? Uh, Trundle. Oh. He started on Lucian, though. Lucian? Yeah. Lucian. Luscious. Lucian O O. Lucian O's. You know, that'd be pretty funny to be streaming instead. We're just going to play some Overwatch. <laughs> <laughs> there was a Lucio pick. All right, now that they're in game, we can load the spectate. There we go, chat. This is what we're looking at. Trundle, Jax, Zareth, Lucian, Zyra. There's a distinct lack of tank here. Oh, yeah. However, uh, top lane, at least, I think is definitely going to go better for Dylan being on something like a Trundle instead of Aurelia. I know he has a lot more experience on the Trundle than the Aurelia, and Trundle is way more consistent with his damage, not relying nearly as much on his abilities as he can throw down two auto or two abilities and then get a lot of autos off of those. Yep, and we're going to see the Maokai, Warwick, Morgana, Kaisa, and then... What is that? That's a Braum. Braum. We definitely have a pokier uh, bot in mid on the side of uh, long anime schlongs, barring a Kaisa poke into a dash, which is probably to be expected with frontline Kaisa here. I mean, it could also be frontline Lucian, so, you know. We saw it's true. We saw both last game, to be honest with you, with this matchup. Um, it'll be interesting to see, uh, you know, the players flip-flopping champions. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. I think for this matchup specifically, I'm again looking at the top lane. How does the Maokai do into the Trundle? And I got to feel like the Trundle is not going to feed over two early kills like the Aurelia did. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I, have, I have to think that this game is actually going to be faster than the last game just because I think the Trundle is going to be ahead that much more. Um, Definitely. Going to require... What? I was going to say, it's going to require more, more pressure from Theatrix. As oh, well yeah. as and, Neil the Steel is just going to ignore it. And also the fact that Theatrix can't just walk through a wall at level 3 for an easy, like, cheese kill. He's not going to be able to do any sort of, like, dashing or anything like that, uh, barring his Q, until level 6. So it's going to be a much slower game for Theatrix if he doesn't get a really good gank off or doesn't somehow cheese the Jax before he has his counter strike. Yep. Anyways... Your game one MVP is Hiromar. Congratulations, Hiromar, Me. for your game one MVP. It's your girl, level one potted plant. 
Yeah. Why would you vote for someone who can't even break 40k damage? I, I, you I mean, know, honestly. I I honestly don't know. Beats me. Hashtag revote. <laughs> Hashtag. Yeah, I demand a recount. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here. Hillary Clinton demands a recount. <laughs> About damn time. <laughs> oh, man. All right, we're oh, loading no. into the game. What are your thoughts for each team? Who do you have? Uh, long anime slongs yeah. or... They you are keep here. asking me this as it switches to the black screen, and I can't look at the comps across <laughs> the screen. Here we go. It popped up. Let's see. Definitely skins for, uh, well, actually, no, not everybody has skins. Why, Jirachi? Why no oh, skin man. for Kaisa? Can't oh, give you the... Why. There's like 20 skins for Jax. Why don't you have one? They're all cheap, too. But, uh... No trundle skin. Let's see. Gift I that... I know that a skin. we definitely have two stronger champions for the men top lane on long animation longs. We have the trundle and the Zerath. Uh, I know playing with Dylan a lot, he is good on that trundle. He can play it a lot of ways. And playing with Dylan for, or Hiramar for a split. Damn it, they're both named Dylan. What the hell? <laughs> uh, yeah, that's why you got to use uh, <laughs> summoner names rather than real names. Uh, but playing with Hiramar for a split, I know he's very good at that Zareth. He's very good with those champions who can stun and do stuff from a good range of way. And Simply Phenomenal being, as far as we know, relatively inexperienced on the Morgana, uh, it's definitely going to be, I think, Hiramar's going to have the advantages of that lane. Dylan is going to have the advantage in the top lane, being on someone better than Aurelia and not being ganked through the wall by Theatrix. I think uh, if they play it right, long anime schlongs, if they play the same way they did last game, uh, just a little better with warding, they can probably pull ahead of this because they are here doesn't have the same means to get ahead that they had in the last game. Yeah, I think I'm in agreement with you. So anyways, chat, let us know who you think is going to win in the chat. Um, as it looks like we have started the game, no invades here, just pretty defensive positions all around. Mm -hmm. um, although you could invade with the Morgana, but instead we're just going to watch some Mastery spam. I am not gonna listen to that forever. <laughs> Sorry, Zorpox. But no. Easy on the ears, though. Oh, why did you bring me back to this? No, we don't want to look at them. Yep. Nope. Hey, directed camera hates you and everybody who plays this game, and yeah. don't you ever forget it. Yeah, it just wants to love Zorpox some more. Give him some more camera time as we see a plant come up. So, At least it's not skipping a Baron fight to watch Maokai hit a banner me. <laughs> That's true. Anyways, red starts for both junglers. I mean, they're going to be on a little bit opposite pass. Neil the Steel gets his first. Looks like he's going to run straight to his blue buff. Yeah. Looks to be running straight to his blue buff. Yep. It looks like Adam is doing a similar thing. Wait, 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 wait. He blast coned <laughs> and must have missed the wall as I don't think Theatrix saw him. Or... But either way, he caught Adam trying to do the same thing he did again. Actually, I think he, that blast cone was intentional. I think he was expecting Adam to do the same thing he did last game and blast cone over the wall this time to catch him at the blue buff and instead opted to take the blast cone to catch Adam in the river. Uh, I'm gonna give Neil to steal the benefit of the doubt. Because it looks like it worked out with him getting the scuttle and Adam having to retreat onto his raptors. Yeah, uh, Theatrix gonna go for raptors instead as Neil the Steel looks like he is now on his blue buff. Yep, yeah, pulled it into the bush. As we look bot lane, Jirachi takes a little bit of damage from a comet proc and a plant. As simply phenomenal keeps getting hit by uh, the Arcano posts from uh, Hiramar. I really just want to put. If, if what I'm thinking happened, happened, I want to give some props to Neil the Steel for being so adaptable in this second game. 
like if he was predicting that then that is something we don't see a lot of people do in this game is adapt to what your opponents try to do we often see like teams try to do kind of a similar thing but just put up wards or something that was a really nice play and it got him the early scuttle and the early lead in the jungle Zorpok sitting on a ward misses the bind with the vine grasp as it looks like Trundle's actually oh, six CS happening? up. We're seeing some meeting in the jungle, but they're just going to back out. Jax did get the second scuttle off of that. Yeah, so er, both scuttles over to Jax. going to be a bit of a gold and CS advantage. Or gold and experience advantage, I should say. My bad. As again, we're seeing another plant being popped up by Zorpox trying to poke out this bot lane. We'll see how long he can keep that up without running out of mana. As again, a little bit of trading in the top. Winner's Bite going to hit Zorpox in the face as Theatrix looks like he is bot top. side. Oh my god. Yeah, what noodle fight in the top lane is. Garfield Juice has run out of mana, but General Dill is a bit low. This is happening again, isn't it? It's just going to lock us into every time they trade in the top lane. I mean, that's what it always does. I've spectated I enough games that Dill. this is this is pretty normal. Because again, Zorpox coming out with the bind. Gets hit with the winner's bite in return. As we again look top lane, General Dill is about half health. Going to bite. Garfield Juice. Garfield Juice also below half health, but Garfield Juice is running out of mana. The more Garfield Juice tries to trade, it's probably not ideal. Yeah, he may just still be kind of cocky after the last lane against Dylan, not quite realizing that General Dill now on Trundle taking Grasp, he has the same sustain that the Maokai does, and he has way more tank shred early on than the Irelia does. Yeah, Garfield Juice having to back first in the top lane giving General Dill even more CS. So now a 13 CS lead as the wave is actually going to crash into General Dill. Putting Already Garfield Juice. Already over 200 CS lead at five or six minutes. I don't know if it's 200 or if you're meaning to see 20. Uh, uh, gold lead, that's what I mean. <laughs> I know what I say, I just can't speak it. <laughs> this, you're fine, you're fine. Anyways, Garfield Juice now back in the lane. Hiramar, a little bit out of mana. As again, General Dill, already level 6 versus Garfield Juice, who went bomby cinder first. Taking a bit of damage is General Dill. He's going to have to use an ultimate or something. And now I think that pulls out Pillar coming out here. Flash forward by General Dill, but he gets knocked back by Garfield Juice. As Neil the Steel has coming up through the river, and the directed camera takes his bot lane. Grasping Roots <laughs> are going to hit, and Neil the Still jumps in, but the flash by Garfield Juice means that he's out as Theatrix is now going to show his face. But he's a whole level yeah, down as flash by uh, Neil the Steel and General Dill is going to back. That was some uh, interesting Yoda speech there. Uh, taking a lot of damage is General Dill. You know, <laughs> lots of good ideas has Yoda. <laughs> uh, we see the teleport back to lane by uh... aspire to be like him every day we should <laughs> <laughs> and they're gonna double ward that bush I, I don't know That's, hey uh... two wards is better than one we know the old saying yeah um, I, don't, I don't think that saying applies here as General Dill again trading with Garfield Juice in the top lane. Still gotta manage, imagine General Dill is on the upside here. As he now has boots in a, a Tiamat. Has a Tiamat, General Dill does. <laughs> General Dill does have a Tiamat. <laughs> Clear the wave, he shall. <laughs> yes. Big CS lead gets he. As we're going to see General Dill now flash going after oh Garfield Juice. Garfield Juice is going to try and go back in and get some health back, but General Dill has kind of cut him off from the tower, and Garfield Juice looks like he might be dead. And that is first blood in the top lane. First General, blood, Dill. General Dill gets. 
<laughs> Man, this is just going to be a recurring theme, isn't it? <laughs> Anyways, that is unfortunate for Garfield Juice. It's going to set him even further behind General Dill, who's already level 8. Jeez. Level 8? He has a level a minute right now. Yep, as we see the TP top lane by Garfield Juice, he's only level 6, and he's oh, actually TP'd no. to a minion instead, and Gar General Dill is sitting right there waiting for him. <laughs> and he... That is so unfortunate. And now the minions are going to do a hefty amount of damage to him. Not going to fight, as Neil the Steel is also topside. They oh. might think about a dive. Oh, no. Poor Garfield Juice. This is not, not going well so far early. As Neil the Steel is actually taking the Krugs while Theatrix is uh, bot side taking his blue buff. Take his blue buff, Theatrix does. <laughs> this is what I think of that. As General Dill gonna go press in to the dive, and then here comes Neil the Steel. He's gonna counter strike in. Both of them are gonna get grasped underneath the tower. Neil the Steel is actually gonna die to the tower. But General Dill is going to get double buffs now after uh, he kills Garfield Juice. So buff transfer complete and has double buffs now, General Dill does. As Theatrix is going to go in <laughs> bot lane, the uh, knockup I'm going to miss from New Kappa Turk as Hiramar gets a hefty amount of damage onto Simply Phenomenal in the mid lane at Glacial Frisier. Decent play uh, Long Anime Swans made uh, with... Uh, they did, traded a kill for a kill, they did, but Dylan gets the back. Yeah. And, uh, that's a huge, huge back. Yeah, it looks to be building, uh, well, I don't know what you build. Titanic. Build. Yeah, Titanic Hydra first. Definitely, on a trundle, the better thing to build. You don't need the extra life steal in addition to what you get, uh, especially with a trundle trying to split push. Titanic is way better for that. Ravenous is better for trying to team fight and get the uh, health off of What is things. Theatrix doing? Theatrix diving in, going to get the suppression. Or does he? He missed. Actually, heal coming out by Hiramar. Hiramar going to stopwatch, that? and that is a dead Theatrix trying to dive underneath I, the tower. I, I've got to rewind that. What just happened? He was under the suppression and got out. I honestly couldn't tell you what happened there. Looked like more spaghetti code, if you ask me. Anyways, kill over to uh, Hiramar, who backs away. It looks like Neil the Steel, Zorpox, and Digital Love trying to take this Mountain Drake. They're going to have to deal with a Kaisa. No, Kaisa goes in. Bear Dragon going over to Neil the Steel as Frontline Kaisa comes out. And New Kappa Turk now has to flash over the wall. Neil the Steel not going to be able to get there. Digital Love going to chase after him. And is he going to solo dive this? That would be aggressive. No, okay. he does not. I'm rewatching this to see what happens. At quarter speed. Uh, at. Oh! Okay, Hiramar had his stun on himself and it landed the split second after Adam landed the suppression. So he was stunned out of it. Wow. Talk about a series of unfortunate events as we see Trundle just not caring about the Maokai damage and instead smacking that tower as <laughs> Theatrix is so low. Gonna get the double counter strike is Neil. Neil's taking a lot of tower damage. Neil's gonna end up dying for that. But Digital Love picks himself up a kill. You gotta say that's worth Neil sacrificing himself for the good of the team. As Kiramar is trying to take down Simply Phenomenal, does not have the ultimate, so cannot get the kill trade with Malkai right now Dill cannot eh, he's out of mana so yeah for now as we're, again we're seeing more pressure mid lane New Kappa Turk blocking some stuff as the shocking orb gonna get the land the stun there and Hiramar picks him off the Arcano Pulse the General Dill still trying to trade up here with uh Carfield Juice. They're going to eventually get this tier in the mid lane. So early gold lead going over to long anime schlongs. Garfield Juice looking like he's going to go after General Dill who is trying to back in the middle of the lane. and Just says, trying to BM that back. <laughs> <laughs> I 
<laughs> oh, General Till, you make me laugh. As the Aspects now. Dylan does not have. <laughs> yeah. Theatrix has shown himself topside as he might think about interrupting this back. Nope, General Dill finally out. Neil the Steel finds a pink ward. Infernal Drake next. It is... Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm, out, of, I'm out of comedy right now. <laughs> My comedy juices have been replaced with uh, wow. exhaustion pheromones. It's a natural process. I'm sure everyone understands. Sure. Let's go with that. Yeah, like we were saying, uh, is it definitely, like we were saying earlier, it's definitely something that long anime songs can make a oh, lead no. off Oh no, because we got Neil the Steel coming in and around. Super, simply phenomenal. Simply phenomenal is so low. And Arcana Pulse is going to get the kill, and that's a killing spree for Hiramar. Uh, they are here. Did take the Baron though? Picked up by uh, that's not uh, a... Theatrix. I almost called him Aluska because I was hoping that Hansu was here with us. Colin coming out. Jirachi is frontlining with the Kaisa and taking it to the face. As Hiramar and Neil the Steel trying to get away from Garfield, just Neil the Steel going to get taken down again. As now Hiramar trying to get away, and frontline Kaisa almost died to the Colling. Digital love. <laughs> Gonna get Dylan this tower. Just on that tier. Yeah, and General Dill not leaving this top lane. Probably gonna just go with the 1v1 all game long as he's got a fairly large wave and Garfield Juice really can't fight him anymore. Completed Honestly, Titanic Hydra. If the if the Maokai just keeps trying to get on the Yeah, uh, here it comes Trundle, the dive. He'll oh. get he'll lose, because Trundle can just stick on the tower. As long as the Maokai doesn't get on the other side of it and get hit by the Titanic proc, the tower will not aggro him. He doesn't have to build the Sunfire. The Maokai, if in those fights, needs to let a Titanic area of effect hit him before he goes in on the Trundle, or else he's just letting the Trundle get free damage. Yeah, so uh, another tower going down in the bot lane, meanwhile, to Digital Love 69, um, after Jirachi was forced out of that lane. Uh, so what they are here has done in the past has been take early leads from the early game and then snowballed. Here, they don't have that early lead. Do you see them coming Definitely. back? Oh, man. It's a hard question. Uh, if we're going to go by last game and what we saw, I believe that both teams are trying to play a similar comp to what they did. They both have the, like, pseudo tankiness. They uh, sometimes. You see a massive fight in the top lane. Neil the Steel eventually gets the kill, secured it with the counter strike as we saw yeah. Shocking Orb fly way wide to the left like a Blair Walsh field goal. But yeah, we have high damage, kind of peely mid laners, uh, hyper carry bottom laners, and bruiser tank matchup in the top lane. However, uh, this game we see long anime schlongs, they picked up champions that were way better for what they're trying to do. At this point, with such a lead that is way bigger than last game, it's definitely going to take some misplay by Long Anime Schlong or some very good play by They Are Here to turn the tides of this fight. Yeah, two uh, tier two towers down at 16 minutes is not something you want to see if you are They Are Here. Uh, they're about 7k, 8k gold down now as well um, as the Infernal Drake is spawning. I don't think they can contest here as General Dill has rotated down as well. Yes, they Definitely. took the Rift Herald, but they haven't used it yet. And they don't really have anywhere on the map where they're generating any kind of pressure where they can effectively use it. It's just really just a, den a denial from General Dill at this point as Neil Definitely. the Steel is going to walk into the jungle, going to get spotted by a ward. And this is interesting positioning, I should say. That Trundle is definitely a huge factor this game because the Aurelia was decent at split pushing and decent in a team fight, mainly excelled at eliminating squishy targets. However, the Trundle is excellent at split pushing and very good in a team fight against the tankier opponents, which is what Long Anime Schlong struggled to take down in the last fight with the Braum and the Ross. Yep, we're going to see the fight break out here in the bot lane. Ultimate coming out, and they're going to get the knock up onto. New Cap of Turk, they're also diving in onto Jirachi. Jirachi taking down here as 
The double kill coming out here for uh, Hiramar, who's going to get caught by Theatrix and friends. They're going to get the kill down and finally the shutdown, but Zorpox and General Dill should be able to clean this up. Let's flash forward by General Dill. He's going to find Garfield Juice, and Zorpox ends up KSing the kill away from General Dill. All told, that is a 4-4-3. Four, four, and it looks like they're going to get this last T2 tower. Honestly, with the with the Trundle being so ahead already, giving the Zyra a kill isn't a bad thing. That Zyra scales pretty well. That is true. Saw the Zyra getting a big knock up there onto New Capiturk, um with the Strangle Thorns. The giant plant thingy. I don't, I don't, I don't really care anymore. Plant zone. Yes. Let's just call it that. The plant zone. It's not the danger zone. Welcome to the plant zone. Massive wave forming in the top lane, but I think General Dill is going to be able to get there and handle that. Actually, General Dill is walking back to the base. <laughs> I'm not sure why. Oh, to pick up control, uh, words. control words. Honestly, that's the reason Tilted Torpedo's lost. <laughs> no control words. Yeah, and also we were bad, but that doesn't factor in as much. Zorpox and get a little bit of damage out here onto Garfield Juice, who just doesn't care. As we see, Frontline Lucian popping out. Baron spawns oh, in 10 please. seconds. We're going to see a fight break out here. Jirachi is nowhere to be found. Shocking Orb lands. An Arcano Pulse also hits the Atrix. There are a lot of little seedlings here for Zorpox to make up a massive amount of plants. As they find a ward in a bush. Definitely. As long as they bait out the uh, Maokai ult and can dodge the Grom ult to some degree, I believe that the team fight is hugely in Long Enemy Shlong's favor. I mean, even if the Maokai ult lands and some of the Grom ult lands, as long as they don't get like a five man on both, uh, they are here can't really contest this Baron other than a steal. This Zorpox's plant zone is definitely, I think, is just as good as both the other two ults combined. It has such a wide area, such a potential to do damage and stop the enemy team. And it's so good when you are, like, firmly planted at somewhere like the Baron Pit. Um, as we see, more plants coming out. Um... A waves forming bot lane. It looks like Digital Love is going to split bot now and catch that wave. That's actually a fairly sizable wave. Should get a lot of gold. But if you are there here, you know the Lucian is bot side. Should you pick a fight right now? Yeah, well, they sent someone down there without the uh, teleport. They could posture over Baron. However, most of the damage right now, or uh, a lot of the damage, is on that trundle trundle has i think more damage at the moment than the lucian does uh he is also able of cape or capable of shredding tanks uh i think the biggest factor here is that they are here doesn't have vision on long anime schlongs if they did they might be able to make something happen try to go somewhere where they're less pop uh, less uh populated but for when they just saw the Lucian there, I don't think they could have really done anything without risking getting caught out. They yeah. really need to establish some vision on the other side of the river. Yeah, anyways, it is a 10k gold deficit at the moment. Um, so, gold lead starting to... It's still growing just bit by bit here for long animation longs. Um, as another dragon is about to spawn here. New Kappa Turk gonna find General Dill in the brush. Gonna get one proc off. Winter Bites hit as well, and General Dill actually gonna back away. Kaisa it lands. I don't know what that's called, actually. Uh, uh, Marky Shooter. Marky Shooter, yes, that. Supercharge? No. Void Seeker. It's gotta be Void Seeker. It, it's obviously Marky Shooter. Yeah. The Void Seeker landed by Kaisa. As more Pink Warriors are being placed by this Baron. Uh, didn't you know the team that puts the most pinks on Baron automatically wins? It's it, like Quidditch. You can score goals with Nexus, or you can just catch the snitch, which is dropping five control wounds. 
Yeah, as they're going to try and 2v1 General Dill in the top lane. He's going to use the pillar <laughs> and kind of <laughs> trap theatrics and Garfield Juice. I don't even I, I don't even know. Yeah, that's what I think of that. The new Kappa Turk, for whatever reason, is top lane. Getting pinged by his own team. So we might be seeing some internal communication errors here. As General Dill going to knock Kaisa away and just going to stand here and kind of laugh at them. As now he sees theatrics, he's going to dance at theatrics a little bit. He dances back. Meanwhile, the rest of Long Anime Schlongs is bot side. And it looks like Long Anime Schlongs are just going to go for this uh, inhib turret. They're already down to half health. And that should actually be the turret as Neil the Steel is going to be able to take it and then just hop out. I mean, even without Dylan, they have a Jax and a Lucian. That's definitely too hard. Extremely good at taking towers. Plus a Zyra there to back them up with all the range and stun they can provide. They can pretty much take yeah. any turret. Neil the Steel frontlining a little bit here. Going to get taken down by Simply Phenomenal as General Dill is going after the turret. Uh, the... Ultimate coming out from Maokai, but they're so low. New Kappa Turk is well below 25%. Kiermar going to get the snipe on him, and that is the turret for General Dill and Long Anime Schlongs. Now a 12k yeah. gold lead. They're going to take the inhib and probably walk bot, get another inhib, and then I'm guessing it's back, Baron, and game. It's like exactly what I was saying right there. Like They could take any turret as long as they have greater or equal numbers simple as that yep. if, like it's gonna be super easy for them just to take Baron and end like you say as Lucian actually the one left behind Jirachi gonna hit the void seeker out I don't know if that landed it did not land Marky shooter. Marky shooter yes new name it has the better it is the better it is <laughs> Neil the Steel, find Scuttle he does. Dead is Scuttle. <laughs> River they see now. Uh, and that was another Infernal Drake I think they picked up somewhere along the way as well. So one mountain, two Infernals. Not looking so hot if you are... They are here. Honestly, Dylan's probably still mad that he doesn't have a cloud. Yeah, he probably is. You can give Dylan five Infernals and he'll still complain that he doesn't get Cloud Drakes. <laughs> I mean, with the advent of uh, Predator, I mean, why not? Oh, you gotta go fast. I mean, with the changes they did to uh, Celerity, with higher scaling off of movement speed, that is a plus. Digital Love is in the Baron Pit, taking a fair bit of damage from it. As now they're just gonna start it and say, screw it, we're gonna get take the Baron. Here comes the they teleport. That started. is a Morgana. Morgana gonna TP into the Baron pit, and now Morgana oh. is trapped with the Baron. But Theatrix oh. is in the pit. They're gonna contest this Baron here. And in goes General Dill after the Baron. As we see, Neil the Steel takes down Theatrix. Simply Phenomenal is gonna get dropped here as well. Garfield Juice also taken down. And General Dill is so massive. Jirachi has to run away now, away from General Dill. Drachi gets the kill on Neil the Steel, but that is a four for two. Gonna land the pillar, and what was that? Who knows? But anyway, that was, I believe, definitely the wrong call to make to uh, continue the Baron after scaring Long Enemy Shlongs off, because they didn't kill him. If they had gotten a pick, that would be one thing, but going after it when they knew the entire enemy team could still just come in with the way bigger advantage and clean it up, that's what, well, I wouldn't say that's exactly what lost the game, but that's what sealed the nail on the final play. Yeah, you know, once they pushed him off, that pillar cut off the choke point completely. That's why we <laughs> 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 Yeah, no, I mean, well, I mean, it cut off the choke point, so it caught Jirachi, um, but... General yeah, Dylan. The other two as well. Yeah, for whatever reason, they did not 
walk forward and, and instead just <laughs> opted to walk into the mid lane and end the game as there were supers on the inhib turret or nexus turrets. Anyways, both games going over to long anime schlongs. They are your winners tonight. And then blast cone. Yeah, lol. It, f it effed my auto pathing. Yeah. Anyways, both games going over to long anime schlongs. We're going to get our MVP poll in the chat. After we change it, we are going to change pull after we uh, paste it. New pull. Ta da! Oh, you did it so fast. I know, it's copy and paste is a brilliant thing, isn't it? Oh, you're. Yeah, screw you. <laughs> I was typing. <laughs> well, see, I, I, you know, whatever. I, anyways. All right. Game two, here are the numbers for you. General Dill going two, zero, and eight with 242 farm for most in the game by two over Jirachi. Um, game two MVP, who is Neil the Seal <laughs> sacrificing himself for his team to the tune of three, six, and six, uh, those six deaths. So I think every time Neil died, he at least secured his team a kill. So, you know, it's one thing when someone gets an MVP vote doing substandard, but I'm, if Hiramar wins MVP this game doing half as well as he did with only 20,000, <laughs> it's, it's just wrong. Yeah. You know, I was looking at some damage numbers. Yeah, 20,000 for Hiramar leading the way for the team, 12,000 for General Dill, and then 11,000 for Zyra. Um, and then nine thousand for digital love. Let us I know. Guess. Let us well, know who your uh, MVP in the chat. That is the voice of Jirachi, team captain. Spooked. For they are here. Spooky, spooky, spooky ghost. Actually, it's, no, it's spooked. It's spooked. I'm spooked as a different person. I said spooky, but yeah, sure. Uh, Chris <laughs> Mackley. Anyways. Okay. I want to see the uh, CC once again. The Maokai coming in with the highest CC score. Who would have guessed? That is such a surprise. But yeah. oh, okay, Zyra has 32. I was about to say Dylan has the second highest CC score on his team at 18. Just the slows and pillars. 18 is not a whole lot, though, to be quite honest with you. Um, hey, that's still second best. But. Anyways, seeing as we don't have the other team here, I don't know where they and are. And if uh, Hillary Clinton knows anything, it's about being second best. Yikes. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I guess we'll start with uh, some questions for you, Jirachi, seeing as uh, Hiramar is not here yet. And You got game one MVP. Yep, game one MVP. I, I... I didn't even open the stream, but I could have told you that. <laughs> yeah, he, 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 he played yeah, too, like, so fucking well. In but game he was one off of 40,000 damage, so, I mean, does he really deserve it? Yeah. <laughs> Omega, yeah. <laughs> he did the most damage, therefore he doesn't deserve it. <laughs> it so, wasn't 40,000. Uh, that Maokai ult that completely went to outer space, will it be in the fails video? Uh, I have no idea what you're talking about so, legitimately, but I, when I rewatched, yes. <laughs> there, there was <laughs> there was a, a call. I think it was it was a teleport in by Garfield Juice, um, game number one at the Elder Drake, uh, and uh, he throws uh, the the nature's grasp in a direction that's not facing the dragon. I'll look at. I'll take a look at it. But um, I mean, probably. Anyways. If it's a fail, it's probably going in. Yeah. So talk us through having to sub out Elucida this week. Did that really affect your team, or did you feel like I, you guys still perform pretty well? I'm not sure that. Um, actually, that had too much of an effect. Like Theatrix is still like an awesome player. He's actually, I he's feel like he's really similar to Elucida, and he's. He's pretty versatile to work with, and obviously it always hurts not having your full roster, but um, I'll say I don't think the issue was 
that we had to stop. Yeah. Okay, so game number one, then, you guys got your lead, and then towards the end, it seemed like the game started stalling out, and you had difficulty finding ways to close it out. Yeah. Was Is that seem like a fair assessment of how the game yes. went? Yeah, that's... And we've... Like, we've been trying to figure out our shot calling all season, um, and I guess that kind of, that kind of contributes, but yeah, if we, we need to also learn how to close out games. Yeah. All right, so looking ahead, next week you have News Team Assembled, who I do believe is playing right now. So what is something that you guys are going to be looking to try and do to maybe change things up next time? I know you've been pretty consistent with that Maokai pick in the top lane. Is that something you're thinking about continuing? Uh, I haven't thought too much about that yet. I like to take it one week at a time. But I'll say bot lane matchup is going to be so hype. Yeah, it should be pretty fun. Anyways, we are joined now by the one and only General Dill and also MVP for game number one, Hiramar. What's up, guys? Hey, Dylan Squared here. Dylan Squared. <laughs> they even say the same things they do. Oh, wait. Can... <laughs> I want to throw in something. Uh, did anybody notice I built a pickaxe on Lucian in game one? <laughs> uh, what? I wasn't my really first, watching. My uh... first... My first back, I bought a recurve bow and a pickaxe, thinking I was playing Kaisa. <laughs> oh yeah, actually, actually now that now that you remember that, when you say that, I do think that. Yeah. So here's the thing, Rich. You expect that I know any lane, but top lane exists in this game. <laughs> I mean, I altered the wave thinking I was a Nivea <laughs> in uh, game two. <laughs> So uh, we have five votes for Dylan game two and two votes for Hiramar, two votes for Digital Love, and one for the call others. It. Let's yeah, just call, call it. it. The fun. others. Nice. I love it. The they others. Exist, <laughs> All right. So there we go. Okay. So I have a question for uh, Dylan. Which what was your mentality, uh, the uh, general Dylan, not the Hiramar? <laughs> So what was your mentality not picking up Karma in the first game when you saw the Maokai being picked? Oh, I so wanted to do it. I would have been it would have been so fun to tilt you. So hard. It would have been great. But I mean our our team is pretty standard. We run just all damage champions for the most part. And the more damage we have, the better we do. We just needed late game scaling with the rest of our comp and Early was the way to go, just chill in lane, die a few times, but scale up anyway. Yeah, the, the, the actual question for that is, why did, in the first game did you pick the Aurelia instead of, like, a Trundle or something else that's more toward what you want to do? Because I don't like boring lanes, I like fighting people. Unless okay. I tilt you with Karma, then I don't like boring lanes. Then I love boring lanes at that point. <laughs> So you picked the Irelia game number one, um, and then farmed his ass off. <laughs> yes. Oh. <laughs> Jesus it was uh, Christ, that that kind of the idea picking the Irelia into a Maokai. We saw it struggle a little bit early, um, and then you got ganked twice by uh, Theatrics. Um, yeah, but fuck you! I will int under tower <laughs> before I give him more kill credit. <laughs> uh, I I mean. Yeah, I got a little aggressive early, which I shouldn't, because Maokai has that high base damage in the early game. But just scaling into late game, catching farm, and being like, hey guys, we know our teleport timers, we can rotate around. I think we have the rotation advantage if Maokai is not there. I can try to, if he tries to teleport in first, I have plenty of ways to stop it. He can stop me too, but all in all, once I just got to that third item, it was... There was no way Maokai could answer me at that point, and it was just a 4-1 split push threat. Yeah, so okay, this question's over to uh, Hiramar. Um, the victor game number one, not something we've seen you play a whole lot of. Has it been something you've been kind of working off on off to the side? It's his most played champion this split. He's played it in the in the previous five games before we banned it. You know what? Yeah, I, uh, I haven't been that. casting those, so... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I did. I played it once. I think last split back when Victor was really, really, really bad, and then we just kind of put it away. But I had played Victor a lot back in season five. I think he's actually my third highest mastery champion. Not the Anivia. Um, <laughs> it actually surprisingly goes in Anivia, Timo, and then Victor. <laughs> <laughs> 
So what you're telling me then is that we're gonna see a Teemo at some point in time, yes? We did. We already did. We did. Game one, light of the season. Exists. You know what? I uh... I played Bemo. <laughs> <laughs> we need more Bemo. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> Anyways, uh, another question I wanted to ask is: in game number one, we saw kind of just some seg. Uh, so this is to both captains. We saw some very segmented fights um, where it started out very coordinated and then just devolved from there. Was that just a product of maybe a breakdown of communication or just priority targets? <laughs> Uh, that's a good question. I don't pay attention in fights that much. <laughs> it's some I, solo queue mode. <laughs> I generally just hope my four-man squad can kite back properly together, and then I run around doing whatever I wanted at that point. Very much, I'm a cutie pie. If I don't know what I'm doing, then they don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Oh. Yeah, okay. I have a question towards, uh, they are here. Uh, in game one, you all had a... Like, not a huge advantage, but a decent advantage for most of the game. It was towards the uh, time when Baron was up. You all saw Dylan in the bottom lane, and you had five towards the Baron pit. Why did you... What was the, like, shot calling behind kind of, like, sticking around, spreading out, and not trying to do something? Uh, rather than letting them kind of catch up? Indecisiveness. Okay. I don't know what else to say besides that. <laughs> I, that's a good answer yeah all right well i don't really have anything else chat do you have any questions that are not troll questions other than why no ap <laughs> lucian it's obviously better yeah i um, mean non-meta bots all the rage these days double hooks for days not gonna lie we were considering it because of rich's post about non-meta bot lanes we I'm were heavily sure. considering i'm it. learning how to play against them i wouldn't have mind minded I probably just would pick. I, I probably would pick. Actually, I'm gonna. I'm not gonna say what I would pick because I want to hide those for NTA. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Fair anyway. enough. So Anyways, I'm just gonna say it starts we, with S and ends with Iver. If we don't have much left for this game, I'd like to say uh, later this week there will be uh, the worst team in the league. Send nudes facing off against double penetration. Everybody tune in. Tune in for the underdog victory when I beat the shit out of Micro Penis <laughs> Max in his jungle because I don't care about winning. Oh, I am just gonna dumpster Max Ridge, and you heard me here. <laughs> I. Uh, you heard it here first, folks. What? What did I just hear? You know what? I don't know, but we're cutting the VOD. <laughs> hey. <laughs> <Good>. Anyways, <laughs> my name is Sling Panda. Signing out for now. This was on PMA LOL. Turn over to PMA LCS. I do believe there's still a match going on. New team assembled versus, I don't know who, double penetration? Yeah, double penetration. Yep, game two. Game two. New, uh, so go tune into that. And uh, yeah. Bye.
Swing!